Making the Barnsley hay rake table left us with a whole lot of walnut cutoffs, little short stubby pieces like this, end grain that really doesn't have a whole lot of uses normally. Being the wood miser that I am, I couldn't see throwing that away, so of course I brought it back with me. But what to do with that? I felt the perfect solution was an end grain cutting board. You need the end grain, you need little pieces. The problem is trying to get everything flat and uniform. So the first thing I had to do was take my trusty plane and plane everything down to about the same thickness because it's so short you can't really run it through an electric planer. So of course I'm gonna be using my hand plane on that. I got all the sides squared up and smoothed down. For the ends, not as concerned about that. A good straight cut is fine because I'll be planing that off on the cutting board later anyway. Next I took the pieces over to the bandsaw where I cut them into one and three eighths inch pieces. Why one and three eighths? Well, because I had a couple pieces that were about two and a half inches, two a little bit better, and that gives me two pieces out of those. Ideally, an end grain cutting board is gonna be at least one and a quarter inches thick. One and three eighths gives me a little bit of uh, leeway to be able to plane off those surfaces nice and flat. You want good joining surfaces, so it's important to clean up those edges that are gonna be glued together. Fortunately, this isn't end grain, it's edge grain, so it'll go really easy on the shooting board. Once this face is completely smooth, I know I've got a good square face that's gonna join up nicely with another piece, and I don't have to worry about gaps. It's gonna be nice, tight fit. This block, yeah, I can still use it. I'm gonna cut out any of the bad parts. Obviously, I don't want voids like this in a cutting board, and I'm not gonna use an epoxy fill on a cutting board. So for this block, I can just cut out over here on this side and on this side, and I'll still have some usable pieces of end grain. Just because I'm making this cutting board out of scrap doesn't mean it needs to look like it's made out of scraps. You can put together a design that looks very intentional. Here I have an echoing of the uh, pieces as they're folded, opposite grains, so that I have alternating grains throughout the board. It creates kind of a nice diamond pattern, and I just put these together by matching up the pieces as they came off the saw. And I really like the way this was for the central piece, so that's my center focus. Uh, I've got kind of a diamond pattern here and a diamond pattern here. This flows nicely into another shape here. Looks like it's actually part of the piece. It's not. Um, same thing over here, kind of echoing on both sides what kind of a pattern I have going through the board. I'm also using the same size pieces, lengths, and widths throughout the board. This section and the end section are all made up of three pieces and they're all the same length. Similarly, these two pieces are also cut out of the same length of pieces stuck together into the board. The center piece has the same end lengths, but the center itself, I haven't put a slit through it. Why should I? They're opposite grain directions. It shouldn't cause a problem with warping. I've got plenty of other things going on in the board to balance things out. Some people might have a question about all the seams being in the same place, but remember, this isn't any end grain to end grain. It's all edge grain to edge grain. It should hold together just fine. I also wanted to make a comment about the use of walnut. Walnut is an excellent material for cutting boards. Both walnut and maple are preferred by chefs. Walnut is easier on the knives, and the end grain cutting board is actually preferred also because it's much, much easier on the knives. They'll last a lot longer. Any of you who do woodworking know it's important to keep your tools sharp. I decided that my cutting board needed a little bit of contrast, not a lot. So I'm gonna add a piece of maple to it. It'll be just a very thin pinstripe down either side on the outside edge, just inside of those one inch or so outside pieces. You'll see how that comes out. Basically, I just sanded this piece down to even thickness. I'll cut it off into lengths that are the length for the height of the cutting board at one and three eighths inches. 
and I'll just glue those into place alongside everything else. Now that my end grain cutting board is all glued up, it's time to level out that surface. You'll find solutions out there on the internet that range from everything from the dangerous to the very time consuming to what I'm going to propose. Very dangerous might include something like using your electric planer to just run it through that. Take thin passes. It'll be fine, they say. Well, I've seen boards exploded, literally exploded, from taking it through the planer. You can imagine what that does to the planer as well. The other method I've seen people suggest is to take a belt sander to it. Take some material down pretty quickly, dusty, messy. Still takes a couple hours to get a nice good surface. So using traditional hand tools, you can take down that surface really pretty quickly and get a really good surface. Start off with a card scraper. I don't have bench dogs that are going to hold this in place, so I end up clamping and doing other things. You'll hear it as it goes across that there's some really hard pieces of glue that if I hit these with a plane, it would probably tip my blade or something. don't want to dull it too quickly. I can see as I'm scraping down that I missed some checking in this piece. I may have to cut off this end, sand this off again, and put in some new blocks that don't have the checks. Card scraper is actually doing a pretty good job of this. And it's uh, fairly even, but I do have a dip here. You can see kind of a shadow line from this dip. That's going to have to get leveled out, and that'll probably take the scrub plane also here. I almost have it to level surface just with a card scraper, which is great, but um, I'm going to just take my smoother coming in from the outside edge. It's a little bit rougher on this side than on this side. This side's actually pretty good. I could almost go with a sander, but taking my hand across it, I can feel a couple of higher spots. Uh, the uh, smoother actually I was going to work better at an angle on the end grain so it's like adding a higher angle because it's a bevel down the angle won't change if I put a different blade in it but I can change it by skewing the way I take it across the surface so taking it at about a 45 and just some light passes nothing too aggressive I could add, uh, if I was going to come off the end over here, I'd just chamfer these edges. I do want the edges chamfered on my final board. You can hear that it's missing in the center. That means it's not quite all at the same level. And before I finish everything up, I'm going to be coming across and trimming the outside to even anyway. There we go. That's just enough to keep it from blowing off the end fibers. It's actually not too bad, probably good enough to take a 80 grit sander to it at this point.
I've rough sanded the board. This is just to 80 grit. And at this point, I want to, I've also uh, lined up my edges, cut those off square. And I'm ready to bevel the edges. I'm going to put a bevel of 3 16 of an inch on the top edge all the way around. The bottom edge is going to get a bevel, but also um, some indent for handholds. I'm going to put the handholds in first and then do the bevels for that. But the bevel for the face, I'm going to just mark where. I want that line to go down to. And that just serves as a visual aid to where I should plane this off to. I'll just go until I meet both those lines. And at first, I won't get a whole lot off. I'm gonna, this is set pretty light right now, so I'll back it off as I start getting more. I'm coming in from both ends. I don't want to go past on this end because that'll give me a chip out. A little bit of difficult grain on this piece. I may actually try using a flat bottom spoke shave for this instead. Spoke shave gives me a little bit more control, lighter cuts. I can see what I'm doing a little bit easier. And I can adjust for these odd grains that I'm getting sometimes. This is pretty wild grain on this piece. I'm taking this just down to the pencil line on both the top and on the bottom edge. Um, and there really shouldn't be any need for sanding, but I'm going to probably just touch it up lightly anyway. The fence is just not tall enough to stabilize this board. You could do this on a router table, but it's a lot more unreliable. The board may tip and then you'd end up with an imperfect result. So we decided go with the Panda router that's going to do a really nice slot for us. And I'm using a three quarter inch cove bit and I'm only going to take it to a depth of a quarter of an inch. I have it set up with the centering jig on the back of the panda router and that'll help me ensure that it's dead center in the um, board itself. Uh, I've taken the thickness of the board and centered it vertically on the ends. I will, however, still make sure that I have the top side up. I don't want to just flip it over so that they end up exactly even with each other from top to bottom. I want the depth set to a quarter of an inch. I'm going to put it a quarter and a tiny smidge more. I think before I was saying three inches in from the end, so it's like a five inch slot. So I'll bring this over. Now, I already knew what the results were gonna be, but uh, as an experiment, I spent a lot of time sanding this side of this uh, cutting board surface down to 800 grit. And on this side, I spent a few minutes using a card scraper to get this kind of a surface. Comparing the two, the 800 grit sandpaper is a duller surface. Why? Because this is scratches, this is cuts. 
huge difference. Feeling it, I can definitely tell a difference. You can see the sheen that I get on the card scraper side. And immediately as I go to the 800 grit side, no sheen. Okay, here I am at 2000 grit. It takes 2000 grit to get close to a card scraper's surface. Got a nice sheen coming up. You can see the reflection all the way across and to the card scraper surface. So you can either spend hours getting it down to 2000 and still not having the same surface as the card scraper surface, or you can just use a card scraper for a few minutes and be done. So this is the card scraped surface of my cutting board. You can see how nicely it reflects the light. It's just glassy smooth. On the other side, it's sanded down to 320 and it's quite dull in appearance compared to the front side. I have a couple of rubber feet that I've epoxied onto the bottom and that's just to give it some airflow underneath it and keep it up off the counter so it won't warp. I think this is going to be gorgeous. Next step is putting the beeswax and mineral oil on it. I'm going to be using about a 20% beeswax to 80% mineral oil. That's all for this episode from Sky Valley Studio. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, please like and subscribe to our channel.